I am Christoph Mergerson, and I'm a visiting assistant professor here at Philip Merrill College of Journalism. Last semester, I taught the journalism history class, Journalism 200. And this semester, I'm teaching a version of journalism, law, and ethics for non-majors and also for majors as well. So I'll start with journalism, law, and policy since you mentioned that. Um, if you're going to be a content creator of any kind, whether you're going to end up being a journalist or other type of content creator, it's absolutely crucial that you know certain things about how the law relates to speech and various aspects of content creation. Um, I can't imagine wanting to be a content creator not wanting to know about libel, not wanting to know about intentional infliction of emotional distress, not wanting to know copyright and trademark law. These are things that you really have to know. Um, so whether you're gonna be a journalist or another kind of um, content creator for media, when you step into my class, you're gonna get a solid foundation on the basics of the First Amendment, the history of the First Amendment, um, the progression of the law in the United States as it pertains to freedom of speech and restrictions on speech, and things like intellectual property, privacy, that's a major topic that's very important, and regulation of broadcast media. So, you know, for somebody who wants to be a journalist or a content creator, again, these are things that are absolutely crucial for you to understand. When you walk into my journalism history class, you know, you're probably gonna be a freshman, maybe a sophomore, but again, you're gonna get that foundation on the history of American media, both in terms of some of the trailblazers, um, some of the remarkable accomplishments in terms of technology that have changed media forever, but also some of the darker moments of history in American journalism that it's really important for us to know about so that we don't recreate those moments going forward. So my core research and teaching interests, um, one way to put it, would be that I'm very interested in um, race and news media, obviously, journalism, law and policy, um, and especially um, media as it relates to social equity. And so the types of questions that I look at in the research and the types of things that I teach have a heavy emphasis on what's the history of how news media in the United States have represented or misrepresented various populations, especially black populations and other populations. And what can we do or what is being done at various levels of society to offer communities that have often been neglected or misrepresented in news coverage, what can we do to better serve them with the journalism that we produce? Uh, it might be through um, alternatives to commercial media that we promote. It might be through some sort of policy or legislative um, kind of action. These are the types of themes and questions that I'm particularly interested in. Yeah, so my dissertation was, it compared how nonprofit and commercial news media in the southern United States are serving local black communities. I chose the South because my family's from the South. Um, I was born and raised primarily in Virginia and grew up mostly around Northern Virginia, but my family is actually from Texas. And I also have a like a kind of a tree in my family that's from Louisiana as well too. Um, and I've lived in Texas and Louisiana. So the South is a very important, um, it's an important region for me personally. But it's also very important to the country because it has the largest population of black Americans in the country. And it's also a region that has high rates of poverty. Um, so it's very important that people down there get the news that they receive and oftentimes they don't. And so my dissertation was really looking at is the extent to which nonprofit news media might be able to do a better job than commercial news media of serving local black populations in the South in particular. We have, we have a wonderful population at Merrill College of obviously people who are practitioners, who are very experienced um, at what they do in terms of journalism. And it's very helpful to talk to them about certain aspects of the news gathering and production practices. You, you just kind of like gather that through osmosis. But I think the biggest thing even too is that they're just very supportive and, I mean, very supportive and encouraging. You know, it's a, it's a very difficult and, and isolating process to, to work on a doctorate. I mean, no, we're not mining coal. There are other jobs out there certainly that are a lot more rigorous. Um, but it, it is very isolating and in, in to, to work on a doctorate and to have faculty here that are very encouraging and are willing to listen to you and are willing to be very supportive that, that can't but help you get to the finish line. You know, I'm very thankful to Merrill College for being the welcoming place that it is. Um, I don't say that lightly. I think that, that um, it's so important to feel like you can be your authentic self and do 
the work that you have in mind. It's very important to find an environment where you can do that. And I do feel like I'm in a place where I can do that. And so I'm very thankful to the, to the Merrill College community for welcoming me and for allowing me to do that. And you know, I'm hoping that students are, you know, find themselves having a similar experience. And I'm here to help them, um, here to try to help them have that experience.